Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over some tin cans. We all have those in abundance usually and uh, they're very easy to make over and uh, again it's a something that we have so it's very cheap. So I'm just gonna base coat all of these. Some I'll base coat black that I'm gonna be doing a crackle finish on. Uh, most of them I base coat this, uh, the color uh, buttercream. And, uh, and then some of these cans, I'll paint the inside of black and um, because I have plans for those. And I'm just gonna give these different finishes. And somehow I didn't get this one filmed, but I decoupaged a napkin on this, and uh, I will link this napkin in the description. This is what it looked like, or that's one half of it, uh, but I just cut down the middle, and uh, one side of it, two, two sections actually, um, fit almost exactly around the edge. And I like to tear that edge so that you don't have that precise edge when, uh, when they meet so that uh, it just doesn't show up as much. I let it overlap a little bit so you could see where it met. Um, the best thing to do is to cut it exactly so you don't see that at all, but I did end up letting mine um, overlap somewhat. And then I took some of this lace that uh, I get at the Dollar Tree. I use this a lot because it's a good narrow lace and it's more of a cloth, cloth rather than polyester feel. And I just feel like it uh, works really well with most projects that I work on. So I go through a lot of this, but I'm gluing it, gluing it on the top and the bottom. And then I thought about adding extra embellishments to the can, but I just absolutely love this napkin, and so I feel like it has plenty going on, but um, I didn't want to leave it this plain. So what I end up doing is adding some shabby roses around the top, and you could make those and then glue them on, but uh, more often than not, I just go ahead and make them on the item that I'm going to put them on. So to make these, I'm, I just tie a knot in the end of a strip of fabric that I have torn. And the thickness that you make it will determine how, how much uh, dimension your flower has. So when you're working with these little roses like I'm going to be doing, you want a, a narrow strip. But I've tied a knot there in it, and then you're just going to start twisting and gluing as you twist. And I'm just using hot glue here. And because I end up touching it a lot, I just use a cheap, um, a cheap low temp glue gun, and I don't have any issues with burning my fingers. Um, as you can see, uh, my glue gun has been through a lot, and I have several of them, but I really put my glue guns t through it, and, um, and I just usually pay five or six dollars for them, so, uh, th to me, there's no point in buying an expensive glue gun. So I'm using different types of fabric here. I, a lot of this is tea towels that I have ripped into strips and uh, coffee stain by dipping them in coffee and just letting them dry. Uh, this one here that I'm making is just made from a curtain shear that I have ripped into strips. But I just make these all the way around the top and I'm gonna zoom the next one in just in case you, you don't know how to make these. Uh, they're very simple. You just tie the knot in the end and just keep twisting and gluing. Now you can twist in different directions to add even more dimension to your rose. But a lot of times when I'm working with these little tiny roses, I just don't feel like it's necessary to change directions. And honestly, it's more comfortable to just keep going in the same direction. So once I get these roses put on all the way around the top, 
then uh, I'm going to add some little wooden feet to the bottom and I just uh, use some tight bond and glue three little wooden feet to the bottom and then once that dries I paint that in the color better cream and uh, that makes a little base for my can. Now this is one of the larger cans so because of that I'm able to put a pretty good size arrangement on, in it. So once it dries, I just stick some flowers in it and I don't really do any major arranging. I just kind of do a little loose arrangement. And I put the roses in there because of the um, decoupage on the outside, but then I added some fall flowers. Now this is another beautiful napkin. I actually just ordered this one. So I'll also include that in the description, but I just love the look of this one. To me, it's hard to find fall napkins that I really like, um, but this one is just so pretty, I think. And uh, when I unfold this uh, and cut the napkin again in half, uh, it's a perfect fit for this smaller can. So um, if you haven't ever decoupaged with napkins, uh, then what you need to do is remove all the layers except for the printed layer. And usually there's a couple of extra layers, sometimes just one, but always make sure that you remove the extra layers. Uh, if not, your decoupage will turn out terrible because it just wants to separate and it just will not lay down. So if you have that issue, then you might want to just pull it all off and start over again and make sure that uh, you get that extra layer off. So uh, I'm just decoupaging that, this on, and I'm just using clear glue as a decoupage medium. A lot of times, and probably one of my favorite ones, this is not clear Elmer's glue, uh, but generally I like to use clear Elmer's glue. I think that's one of the best um, mediums that I can use to decoupage with. I just think it, it holds really well and it's just easy for me to work with. So I'm just uh, decoupaging this on and I didn't worry with the torn edge on this one. I just uh, decoupaged all the way around and cut it to fit exactly. And to make this easier, I just put my decoupage on a little area at a time uh, before I um, I don't try to do the whole can because if you do, then it's just hard to get it to lay down. It's really hard to work with. So uh, any item that you're going to decoupage on, it's a good idea to just do small sections. So after I get this covered, uh, then I'm just going to take a little strip of tea towel that I have just ripped into a little strip. I didn't cut it. I like to rip it that way. Uh, it has that frayed edge. Here I'm just kind of cleaning up that dry decoupage off the ends so that it neatens up the edge. But I cut that little strip. It's just a little a small strip. And I'm going to glue that around the top and the bottom just as trim. And I want that uh, frayed look. So that's why I don't use uh, just a finished trim. Now here I decided to uh, use some antique oxide here and uh, antique around the edges. And uh, I guess that might have helped some uh, because you could probably see just a tiny bit of it above the trim, but I end up adding that trim. So I probably could have gotten away without doing that. Usually when I start one of these, I don't really have, uh, for the most part, I don't have a particular idea in mind. I just kind of create as I go, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do that as well. So after I uh, glue the trim around the top and the bottom with just hot glue, uh, then uh, I am going to make a, a handle for this. So the way I do that is I drill two holes in the t on each side of the top, and then I'm gonna take a pretty good, uh, strong uh, wire, almost too strong actually, uh, but I had already rusted uh, my wire, 
So the way I rust my wires, you can take most wires and you can dip them in uh, some straight vinegar and leave them in um, probably for three, four hours or even overnight. And then the next day or the next, when you take it out of that solution, you're gonna just uh, spray some peroxide on it. And you'll almost immediately see the rust and it works so well. But um, again, the wire that I end up using on this uh, could have been a little thinner, but it's just what I had. So I just cut a length of the wire after I drill my holes and uh, make sure I have some excess. Now I started to go through the top and just kind of wrap it. And you can see here how difficult that is to wrap. I should have probably used pliers, but I'm glad I didn't because I decided that I wanted to uh, come through the inside and let the excess be on the outside. And the reason that I wanted to do that is because I'm gonna curl the excess around a little wooden dowel. Again, it's not the easiest with this grade of wire, um, but I'm gonna curl it around a dowel and that will hold it on and add just a little, a little bit more character to it. And I'm sorry I'm out of frame here. All I'm doing is just feeding that through and then, uh, and then I'll just take a little wooden dowel and wrap that edge around it. And, uh, and that will make a little curly cue on the outside of both sides of the can. And as you can see, that really dresses it up. And then I just stuck some little flowers in here. You could actually give this as a gift and put whatever you're giving as a gift down in this. Um, and then use a cellophane bag and wrap it up and that would make a good little gift. Now this one was a coffee can and I spray painted it black and then I used a crackle medium on it and uh, it cracked way too much. I, it was just way too much of the black showing through. So I went back over it with the crackle medium after that dried. And then I went over that with the color buttercream. The first color that I used was sea glass and uh, that's a Dixie Belle color also and uh, let it crack down to that black. And again, when that black showed through too much, uh, then I went back over it with another layer of the crackle medium and then went over it with the buttercream. And now what, you, what I have is both the black and the sea glass showing through and I was real happy with that and it's going to work really well with this napkin and what I'm doing here that's out of frame is I am tearing out around the pumpkins uh, because I don't want the whole thing on here and um, I really had trouble being out of frame on this one I'm so sorry but uh, I don't want the bottom of the napkin. So um, I just let that hang off the bottom because once it dries, I'm just gonna take some sandpaper and sand that off and neaten that edge. But I just make sure when I decoupage it on that I don't let any of that adhere to the can and I make sure that it's low enough that that's not gonna be on the can. It's just not something that I wanted on this one. But the amount of crackle that I got after doing this the way I did it, I was really happy with. I think it turned out with just enough of the sea glass and just enough of the darker that, um, that it worked really well. And you can almost see the crackle through these pumpkins, which I really like. Now I make sure that when I'm using cans uh, that I don't leave any sharp edges around the top. Um, either they've been opened with a can opener that, um, that gets rid of that or I 
make sure and sand it off really well. Um, but it, it is best to use a can opener that uh, doesn't leave any sharp edges. And these coffee cans are perfect because they don't have that anyway. Paint cans also work well, but it's hard to get the inside of the paint can cleaned up. The plastic ones also work, and the paint will peel out of those. Uh, but paint cans or coffee cans, I think, work the absolute best. Now I'm going to glue just a little bit of foam in the bottom, of floral foam in the bottom of this so that I can uh, help my arrangement kind of stay in place since this has such a wide opening. But I'm just going to stick a loose arrangement of fall flowers and I just add a couple of picks and then some little fall flowers in uh, again, these are just loose arrangements, and I feel like for fall, uh, the loose arrangements just look better to me. And I guess I've never been one to really like uniform, uh, anything being completely uniform. So uh, this, to me, works better, especially, I think, for fall. So after I add those two picks, and then I'm adding this other pick of this little uh wheat grass or whatever it is uh, then I'm going to add a little pumpkin that uh, brings out that sea glass in the uh, in the napkin so what I did I couldn't find a pumpkin that was on a, a pick that was the right color so I just painted it that color and in hindsight I probably could have added another smaller pumpkin in a different color uh, but I was still happy with how this one turned out. So all I did here is just uh, wrap some uh, jute around the top and tie a couple of little pieces of burlap uh, to resemble a bow. And uh, I just kind of kept this one very simple. I think I used a strip of burlap and a strip of a coffee stained tea towel here and then just kind of tie them together and then I just glued that on the top. So I think that's a very simple way to make a fall arrangement. So the next can that I uh, used was just a regular sized vegetable can and I uh, painted it in the color terracotta. That's a Dixie Belle color. And then I put the crackle finish on that and painted over it with a sea glass. Then I had that sea glass to crack down to the uh, terracotta. And I thought that was a good look. And now I'm just gluing a little strip of scrapbook paper around the can. So I'm using that same color of scrapbook paper with a print on it. And I started gluing it on here and then realized that I needed to antique around that. So I took it back off and uh, used my antiquing ink around the top and the bottom. And uh, that's a little hard to do when you've got a little bit of glue on because that glue will really grab your, um, your decoupage. Or your uh, antiquing ink but it was worth taking it off and redoing it so it's almost impossible to do this once you have it glued down to your flat surface and there was no need to to add this around down the seam line because that's just going to be hopefully just blending together and then I had a little uh, a little turkey image that I had torn from um, a book an old book and I wanted to put that on this but it's not very substantial on its own so what I did was I layered uh, some old book page behind it antiqued around the edge of it and then uh, and then this little image I had already antiqued around and then I just glued that in the center of the little book page and then I took my antiquing ink and, uh, and aged around the top and the bottom of the can. Now most of the materials that I'm using today I will have linked in the description. And of course the Dixie Belle colors, you can go to Dixie Belle and order those. 
Now this is a trim uh, that I also get at the Dollar Tree and it uh, looks like a combination of jute and some sort of string. Uh, but I really like the natural look of this. Again, here I am out of frame. But I just glued that around the top and the bottom. And it's amazing the difference that just that little trim around the top and the bottom made on this. Because uh, I want people to know that these were cans, but I don't want it to be very obvious. And then I just finished this one off with some fall flowers inside. And the next one that I'm gonna do is another regular size vegetable can that I first painted uh, in the color buttercream and then I decoupaged a napkin on it. And I will link that napkin in the description as well. And then I just trimmed out around the top and the bottom of this one. And I used that same Dollar Tree trim here. And although I'm going to be putting an arrangement inside this one, I painted the inside of it evergreen. And then once that dried, then I went over it with some brown wax to dull it down a little. And then I just made a little hang tag for this one by uh, putting a little pumpkin on uh, some book page and then uh, layering some green um, paper behind it. And uh, that's all that I did to this one. So that's all the cans that I did on this one, but I'm gonna do a pumpkin to add to the end of this one. And I'm just gonna start out with a regular foam pumpkin that I had thrifted uh, with something else over the top of it. And I took that off the top and it's kind of a smallish pumpkin. So I'm gonna decoupage this napkin on it. And I love the, um, the purple flowers with the sunflower. I think it's a really pretty color combination. And what I'm gonna do is just tear out the images and uh, decoupage them on the pumpkin. Uh, and once I tear two of those images out, uh, then it will cover the majority of the pumpkin. And then I'm gonna fill in with another napkin. And I didn't bother painting this one because first of all, it's already white, uh, but it does have somewhat of a foam look to it. So I need to make sure that I cover most of it, enough of it that uh, you don't notice that that is foam behind it. So um, again, I just decoupaged a couple of these images. And then once I got these on, then I just started kind of filling in. And I just did that by tearing out some of the images from this napkin and just kind of filling in. And I didn't worry a whole lot about what I put on the bottom. Uh, I was more careful with the placement on the sides. But sometimes I like to combine napkins because um, then you end up with something entirely different than you can find anywhere else. And as long as your colors coordinate uh, and the styles somewhat coordinate, then it will work out. And I will say that although I do love decoupaging on pumpkins, it is a very messy job. And someone mentioned that I still have a bandage on my thumb. Uh, and yes, I did cut it pretty badly, not enough to need stitches. Uh, but it, it was just about healed here and then I was cutting uh, on the saw and the saw kicked my little piece of wood and it cut my other hand. So um, I'm probably going to have a bandage on that one for a little while. But my husband says that, that that's not anything new with me. I am very accident prone, mostly because uh, I'm very careless, and I will admit that. And here I have replaced the stem with a piece of driftwood and glued that in. I was lucky to find one that works so well with this. And, uh, and then I'm just going to glue some floral and greenery around the top. Now, um, 
these uh, driftwood stems, or most of them are the size that can be used for a stem, was given, given to me by a sweet friend. So I'm not sure where those came from. I will try to look up some pieces of driftwood and add that in the description if I can find them. But I think just adding this little bit of floral to the top really helped the look of this pumpkin. And then I hot glued just the smallest amount of uh, Spanish moss around the top uh, just to hide more of the, the white pumpkin. And I think that that really, really worked with this pumpkin. I love the colors on it. I think they're very, very fall. And I also added some pit berries uh, on, uh, on a stem uh, that was wired and just kind of made curly cues with that and kind of hung those off. And that also added uh, a lot to this. And I think the pit berries that I used on this, I got from, uh, from the Dollar Tree also. But again, I just love those colors and uh, really like the look of this pumpkin. And I know I said that that was the last cans that I was doing in this video, but I actually forgot these two. So with these, I painted them in the color buttercream. And one of them, as you can see, uh, I stamped uh, this stamp on the right here from the set I See Paris, which is a redesign set, and I will link that in the description. Uh, you can't get that one on Amazon. But I stamped it on uh, some plain tissue paper and then tore that out and decoupaged it on the front. I tried to stamp directly onto the can, but those ridges kept it from stamping right, so I ended up doing it on some tissue. And on the other one, I found some scrapbook paper that coordinated with, uh, with the B. And this, uh, this is an image that I got off the graphics very free. And I cut that out and antiqued around it and glued it to the center of the decapot or the craft paper or uh, scrapbook paper that I had also antiqued around the top and the bottom. And I just glued those on and tied a hang tag. Those little hang tags also came from the Graphics Fairy. And this big wooden pumpkin in the back was made by my friend Gina. And uh, I thought she did a great job on it. I think she used fencing boards on that. And she is gonna start a channel, I'm pretty sure, uh, and she'll be doing that in one of her videos. So I will get you her information as soon as her channel is up and going. But I think she did an excellent job on that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.